this is Paul James Caden, one of your co-hosts for the podcast, People Under the Stairs. And this is Stan Wangland, the other half of the amazing duo of the People Under the Stairs. And we're hoping that you'll tune in and listen to our wonderful podcast. Hey, Paul, tell the folks some of the things that we talk about in the podcast. We talk about a wide array of subjects, the paranormal, UFOs, missing 411, even such things as some of the conspiracy theories out there that are wild, things that are happening in the news and our world. If it's strange, if it's weird, if it bears talking about, we'll cover it on the show. Yeah, and we do it from a really balanced perspective. Uh, we just don't, uh, you know, uh, come up with something, throw it on the wall and see if it sticks. We try and have, uh, you know, the actual facts of what's going on with interesting people as guests on the show, you know, different authors, uh, and, you know, allowing them to tell their story uninterrupted and, uh, you know, in a full and uh, interesting format. So you can get into anything from artificial intelligence to uh, people who say they've been abducted and been on a flying saucer. So if you enjoy those topics, we hope you'll give us a listen and join us under the stairs. Yeah, and uh, for those of you who regularly listen to podcasts, even those of you who are new, we're on all the podcasting platforms and we're very, very easy to find. So give us a listen. Welcome to Paranormal Heart, a place where people can talk about their paranormal experiences. With your host, Cat Ward, along with a special segment, Oddities with John Mallard. Welcome back, folks, to Paranormal Heart, your monthly paranormal podcast. A new episode is released on the last Sunday of each month at 6 p.m. Eastern. And as usual, you can find Boo and I on Podbean, YouTube, SparkRadioNet.org, iTunes, Paranormal Radio, Stitcher, IamDarkWaters.com every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, as well as any place you can find fine podcasts. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Joyeux Noël, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. No matter what you celebrate... Boo and I wish you great love and respect and a healthy and prosperous new year in 2020. It's sad to say, but this December's episode, it's the last episode of 2019. I had you there for a second, didn't I? Huh? Huh? (laughs) No worries. Paranormal Heart will be back in all its glory in 2020 with some changes. You faithful listeners have asked and I shall deliver. Starting January 2020, you will be able to enjoy the show twice a month. That's right. You won't have to wait to the end of the month for the show. The next episode will be out January 12th, so make sure you mark your calendars, folks. You won't want to miss it. I have a wonderful guest to start the new year right. Who is it? Well, you'll have to tune in to find out. This month, we're doing something a little different. I gave John some time off from the oddities so he can spend it with his family. But don't worry, I have something special in store for you. I have a special guest who will narrate a true, creepy Christmas story. Please enjoy this narration by my friend, an amazing storyteller of 13 past midnight, Steve Stockton. Take it away, Steve. Top 8 Christmas Creatures So, even though Krampus has resurfaced in recent years to add a bit of darkness to dampen everyone's holiday cheer, some cities in America even, Halloween haunted attractions reopen in Christmas with a darkly delicious Krampus theme. Here are some other lesser-known weird creatures from around the world waiting for you in the shadows of Christmas folklore. Marie Lude In Wales, Marie Lude, a.k.a. the Grey Horse, is still a popular Christmas visitor. 
consisting of a decorated horse's skull on a stick held by a person covered in a sheet, revelers lead the nightmare around to neighbors' houses. The group knocks on the door and requests entry, shades of trick-or-treat, by way of singing a song. The person answering the door must refuse with a song as well, and this goes back and forth until the homeowner relents and lets the party in for food and alcohol, or the married lewd gives up and goes on to another house. Gryla An Icelandic giantess who dwells in a mountain cave near the Demoborgir lava fields. Much like Santa, she possesses powers that allow her to know when children have been bad. She nabs mean children and then cooks them into delicious stew. She's also the owner of Jolakaturim, the hellacious Yule Cat, and mother to the mischievous Yule Lads, which you'll meet momentarily. Jolakaturin Gryla's ferocious pet feline stalks the Icelandic countryside devouring those who aren't wearing new clothes on Christmas Eve. According to legend, wool farmers told the tale of Jola Katurn so workers in the wool mills would meet their holiday quotas. Those who did got new wool clothes as gifts. Slow workers became holiday meals for the giant cat. The Yule Lads the legend of the thirteen Yule Lads can be thought of as a precursor to Santa's elves, but before Santa existed. Each Yule Lad is known for a particular brand of nasty mischief, mainly stealing food or pestering livestock. When not thieving eats or bothering the farm animals, the Yule Lads leave either gifts or rotten potatoes in children's shoes, depending on whether the kids were naughty or nice. Zwarte Piet Although the Dutch character Zwarte Piet, also known as Black Peter, has been called racist in modern times. Dutch folks still dress up in blackface as Black Pete. However, the blackface is not intended to portray Black Peter as of African or Moorish heritage, but rather he's merely a chimney sweep covered in soot. Zwarte Pete was originally conceived of as a chained accomplice of St. Nicholas, whose job it was to whip naughty kids with birch switches. Alternate forms of the legend have him leaving bundles of sticks as gifts which were really a thinly veiled threat for disobedient children. Necht Ruprecht While sometimes depicted as looking similar to Krampus, Necht Ruprecht is St. Nick's most familiar helper in German Christmas mythology. Portrayed as either a farmhand or a feral child Santa found and raised, he has a thing for prayer. He asks children to say a prayer, and if they do, they get fruits, nuts, and gingerbread. But if they don't, they get smacked with a burlap sack full of ashes. In the Austrian version, the absolute worst kids are beaten with sticks, then crammed into a sack and thrown into an icy river. Merry Christmas. Belsnickel. Belsnickel is another one of Santa's creepy helpers in Germany. While it's commonly believed that Belsnickel is based on the myth of Necht Ruprecht, there are some differences. The Belsnickel visits solo rather than coming along with Santa. Unlike Necht Ruprecht, it doesn't matter to him if kids have been bad or good. He brings a sack full of treats, which he dispenses, but when the children scramble for the treats, he switches them all, good or bad. The Tomton Remember, looks can be deceiving. While he may appear as a harmless little garden gnome, you do not want to mess with him. Not only is he very strong, but he's easily offended. And if you upset him, a smack to the head is what you get if you're lucky. He's also been blamed for, among other things, killing livestock, beating offenders half to death, or driving them insane. And if that's not enough, his bite is venomous and can kill. However, if you're nice to him, he'll use his mad abilities to protect your household. Well, there you have it. Beware of these lesser-known creatures from Christmas folklore from around the world during this holiday season. May your Christmas be a dark one. Thanks, Steve. That was really creepy and very well told. I hope you listeners won't lose any sleep over it. So my last guest of 2019, I think you'll find quite interesting. He has been a psychologist from New York for nearly 50 years, a clinical psychologist professor for over 20 years. He studied parapsychology and has had some pretty interesting experiences himself regarding the paranormal. I introduce to you host of Just Thinking and co-host of People Under the Stairs, Stan Wanglin. Okay. Hello, Stan. Welcome to Paranormal Heart. Thanks so much for being here. Hello, Kat, and it's my absolute pleasure to be here talking with you on Paranormal Heart. I, I just 
couldn't wait to be on your show. We've been talking about this for a few months now, and um, like normal, it seems to be, I had some tech issues last time we were supposed to record. Finally have you here, so um, thank you for being patient with me and uh, having you set up. I'm not recording in the basement anymore. I'm upstairs in the living room, so I don't know how the audio is going to be. I have to uh, figure that out later, but at least I'm up and running again. Well, it sounds wonderful to me. And, uh, you know, earlier this evening, I aggravated my wife and she sent me down to the basement. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm talking from. No, oh. I'm not talking from the basement. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's a pleasure to be here. And I hope the check is in the mail to me. Uh, <laughs> get it it is. At the end of the week. No, you have a great, yeah, in all seriousness, you have a great show. And thank you, thank you for the uh, wonderful introductions that you've uh, made uh, to uh, – me with uh, some of the guests that have been on your show and uh, you know some of your friends in the field they, they've been absolutely marvelous uh, no no fooling around i've been just just delightful people what a great experience yeah, and um like i mentioned in the intro as well i've been on your show as a guest and co-host and absolutely oh, yes. love doing that with you and paul thank you so much yeah you know we want to definitely have you back on some shows uh, we like to have you for the quality shows, and as you well know, uh, and some of you, uh, you know, when you get a chance to listen to our show, the people under the stairs, you realize that we're usually of intermittent quality. <laughs> <laughs> so we try and reserve you for the uh, shows that have some hope of having some redeeming social value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, know, you guys have a great, great, great show, and it, it's so amazing how um, you we we met just a few months ago on Twitter mm -hmm. and we had an instant friendship. It's really funny how that works. You know, it really is. Uh, and, uh, my son says that all the time. He's, he, uh, you know, he's, uh, I wouldn't say he's a great fan of the paranormal. He finds it interesting, uh, you know, on occasion to, to listen to a show on that. He's a podcaster and producer himself, a wonderful, mm -hmm. talented guy. Uh, but he, he thinks you're marvelous. He, uh, I, I've often said that he says, boy, she's, she's great. I said, oh, yeah, I love her co-hosting. I, I would love to do a show with her anytime or anything else like that. He says, yeah, you know, you, you guys all have, you know, great, uh, uh, a great rapport with one another. You're very, you're very authentic and very genuine, very, very, very nice. And again, the people that you've introduced us to are similar, uh, fine, uh, fine individuals. Uh, they, they're just, just nice people, everybody. Yeah, so I've it's easy very, to be nice. I've been very fortunate. Um with this podcast, meeting other podcasters such as yourself, and everyone has been so amazing. So it's almost like an instant friendship, and we've never met. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I Every time I uh, speak with you, I always uh, feel like I'm speaking not to a new friend, but to an old friend, Agreed, uh, to yeah. be quite honest with you. And, uh, you know, I, I go with that feeling. I, maybe that's part of the, um, you know, the... Uh, psychic phenomenon or something, the sensation that you pick up from somebody or the fear gnome or the vibe or whatever you'd like to call it, you know, you, uh, you, you get a certain, uh, you know, set of, uh, perceptions on somebody and boom, you know, yeah. you like them. Yeah. It's funny. Hmm. Yeah. Well, like I said in the, uh, in the intro, I would, uh, like to discuss today, uh, your shows, of course, uh, mm -hmm. you have a very interesting experience yourself. And you are also a clinical psychologist, and I would like to see what your point of view is of the paranormal from a clinical psychologist's point of view. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, would you like that now? <laughs> <laughs> sure, it doesn't matter. Uh, if we can start or, whatever part you want to start. Show. <laughs> no, whenever you, whenever you like, we can we, we can answer that. I mean, you know, it's I, I have to say that uh, um, maybe I can answer a little bit of that. Uh, and say, I had the privilege, uh, and I really mean the privilege, and people should Google this fellow, because I, I did the other day, and he's still around. Dr. Rex Stanford uh, was a, a professor that I had when I was uh, in graduate school, when I was working on my master's degree, and I was working on my, my doctorate, doctoral degree and um, at St. John's University. And uh, he had just, uh, this is in the 70s now. Uh, he had just uh, gotten out of um, the Rhine laboratories at uh, Duke University, which are very famous uh, for their work in, um, uh, in you know, parapsychology. And uh, that's where I got the first real um, interest. 
from a psychological point of view. And it, it took me aback uh, uh, the way that they viewed <clears throat> Uh, this it was a seminar in graduate school, and I had to pay big money to go in here. There were only fifteen people in the seminar, and other than one other graduate student and myself, everybody else had a PhD, and that should tell you something, uh, because the first thing he said when he came into the class, he said, "Hey, look, I, I'm here from Duke University, and he teaches, by the way, Dr. Rex Stanford uh, is his name. He still teaches at St. John's. I cannot believe this." Wow. Uh, and uh, the thing that he said to everybody was, hey, look, I'm not here to debate whether uh, extrasensory perception uh, and things with the paranormal exist. That's a fact, Jack. And we're going to go from there. And the way that I was first introduced uh, to the paranormal, extrasensory perception, parapsychology was from a scientific uh, standpoint. These guys were like guys playing the ponies or playing the, um, the line in Vegas. Uh, everything had to do with, um, uh, it had to do with altering the odds on things. Am I making sense to you on this? Yes, you are. Yeah, where you could influence, uh, you could, you, you know, you could influence things st statistically, whether it be by telekinesis, you know, movement of things, or you, uh, they particularly use cards, you know, reading cards, Mm -hmm. um, and there's a particular name for the, um, uh, the scientific cards. It starts with a K, and I'm just blocking with it right now. Uh, and then they talked about real, real scientific experiments like, and famous people like Eusebio Palladino, who could actually take a thing like a telegraph key that had a soap bubble around it, packed in a vacuum, and, and, and make the light switch move. Hmm. And things like that. They would do things like this. Uh, exceptional events, you know, outside uh, scientific explanation uh, that had to do with, uh, you know, differences, um, you know, affecting outcomes. And it was that was my first uh, real understanding of that. Uh, and I said, wow, this is a whole different thing than I would imagine. And then finding out. And I hope this is interesting to your viewers. And oh. I think George Clooney did it with the, the men, uh, you know, who stare at goats yes. and remote viewing and things like that. He started telling us about all the research and all the research was being done by Russians because all the articles really? in those days you actually go to. Oh, they were all in Russian <clears throat> because the Cold War is on full blast. And the CIA in Russia were very, very interested in remote viewing. Mm hmm. And uh, as you well know, if you check out remote viewing, you can see um, on it, the declassified uh, information now on those programs through the Black Vault and other things. But you can, you know, Freedom of Information Act in the United States. And we actually had some people who were quite successful with that. Uh, and the Russians did, too. But we had some some really cool people. And that was a big deal that, uh, you know, you could find out what was happening you know, with different places with remote viewing. Uh, and then there were, it was the infamous or famous, you know, Yuri Geller, mm -hmm. things like that. So uh, these were things that uh, the people from Duke University, the Rhine Labs, Stanford University, I believe Harvard had them, uh, you know, during that period of time, I believe if you go on the um, internet, you can find there were, there were about 13 universities that really uh, had sanctioned programs by the government. And uh, most of those uh, are not around anymore. Uh, but uh, that was my introduction to that. The real, real scientific uh, study of this, uh, you know, uh, like you would um, like you would do experiments in um uh, you know, what could I say, behavioral psychology, like, you know, training rats or something like mm -hmm. that. With the, uh, with the paranormal, with paranormal psychology, you were getting these um, uh, out of the norm kinds of responses from people, you know? And, and you know, there's different, ex you know, there's different uh, definitions of that. Um, you know, psychic phenomena, extrasensory perception, precognition, telepathy, telekinesis, Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things, supernatural experiences, out-of-body experiences, apparitions, hauntings, all those kinds of things. Uh, nowadays, 
I think that um, uh, in psychology, you have, you know, area after area that says, don't believe in the supernatural. Uh, don't get, you know, the, the paranormal, you know, don't, don't bet on it. Uh, don't be ex- uh, impressed by eerie co- uh, coincidences and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of that going on, um, you know, but there are some, there are some pockets that feel differently. Uh, I feel differently about it uh, than that. And uh, I don't know, does that answer your question? Or did I go uh, too, too far out in the weeds there? <laughs> no, you're great. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's not what people think. It isn't Barbara uh, Hershey in the entity, you know? And psychologists like myself, clinical psychologists, we meet people uh, many times who have emotional disorders or who have, um, they're in the process of misperceiving things or we're not sure if they're misperceiving things. And then they start um, describing and giving value to things we're not sure whether they are paranormal events. And psychologists, in, in my understanding, you know, they're, Today, psychologists are very uh, cognitive, behaviorally oriented. They're very or- oriented to how your brain works, uh, and they relate everything to your central nervous system. Like if, if you're dying and you're seeing a white light or something like that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when you think you're passing over to the other side, they're just going to say that that's a bunch of random cells, you know, blasting off in your head. Yep. Uh, those I've kinds. Also, of- I've also heard people say that the light that we see is, um, uh, you know, when you're in a operating room or something and the, the, the big mm-hmm. light above you uh, a lot of people say that's what they're seeing mm-hmm. uh, you, you know it's uh, to, to me I, I think that uh, every time people think they know the answer to something that maybe that may be the case in some cases I think you have to take everything on a case-by-case uh, event Agreed. but think of the things uh, you asked about psychologists uh, and the paranormal and, and I hope that's an area that's interesting to you since I'm a psychologist Think about the things that some people could tell a psychologist and we hear. They talk about exceptional dreams, predictive, intuitive, out-of-body kinds of dreams. They talk about clairvoyance, uh, clairsentience. Uh, They talk about apparitions. Uh, People come in uh, to people like myself and they talk about memories of suspected past lives, right? They talk about communications with deceased relatives, friends and family. Uh, We have people who are uh, autistic or we say are autistic or have other things and then show these ungodly uh, abilities with savantism Mm -hmm. where they have these exceptional talents, uh, child prodigies, poltergeist phenomenon like myself. Yes. I mean, I'm a psychologist. I'm a trained observer. It's like the UFO stories. Somebody says, hey, look, I'm not bullshitting you. I saw 400 foot uh, you know, uh, the vehicle fly by at uh, Mach 2. Mm. You know, this is what I do for a living. I mean, that, that's what I saw. You don't want to believe it. What can I tell you? Then you have people with prayer. Lots of people now, uh, they consider religion uh, and things like that. You know, it's a genie. It's a genie. Your prayer, healing by prayers, that's a paranormal event. Mediumship, things like that. Miracles, synchronicity, mm-hmm. things like that. I'm just trying to think of things off the top of my head that uh, we could come across. Now, that for psychologists and for members on your show here, you know, uh, like I'll listen to shows that uh, people have, and somebody will say, "Yeah, that that was Bigfoot. I'm sure that was, and it was, uh, you know, it was this kind of thing." And as the UFO came out, and said, "Whoa, hold on a second here, man. You're talking about this like we're talking about going to Dairy Queen." <laughs> yeah. That uh, you no, know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, I do. That, that's a pretty amazing event you're talking about there. So, you know, people are going to be, uh, I think, logical people who are not uh, necessarily mediums uh, or have all these abilities are going to they have a right to question that. Although on my show, I never do that. I never put anybody on the spot with that. That isn't the point of my show mm-hmm. on people under the stairs. I think that's disrespectful um, to do to people. Uh, who want to tell their stories. But as a psychologist, I have to ask somebody, I have to say, well, you know, you know, what made you think that you saw that? I mean, or, you know, what proof do you have? I mean, were there any footprints afterwards? Were there any marks on your body? Were there any this or that? 
you know, the same thing that I would do when I would be doing an investigation. I was just uh, going to say that's very similar to the approach that a paranormal investigator would take. Absolutely, because yeah. you're trying to use a scientific method doing something that is related to, you know, extraordinary kinds of events mm -hmm. or, you know, extra normal, uh, extraordinary influences. So it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It's like, um, it's like, uh, this isn't a show on religion, but I was doing a show with Paul the other day. He asked me to do the spirit side and I'm a, I'm a highly trained scientist, but I'm also a very religious person. And people will say to me, Stan, how, you know, come on, I'm not, you know, you can have all those nice ideas and everything else, but you don't have to be a practicing Christian or anything else like that. And I'll say, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> And they'll say, well, how do you believe in all that boogeyman stuff and, you know, genie stuff? And I said, I said, because I don't see any, I don't see any difficulty with the two of them. And I think the same thing works with the paranormal sometimes. That in religion, religion doesn't explain how things work. That's the role of science. Religion many times tells us why things are the way they are. Or why we should interpret something a certain way, or why we might want to look at something <clears throat> a certain way, or why we might want to behave a certain way. All the rest of the stuff relates to the whys. It's not. It, it doesn't relate to the you know to the physics of something or whatever. So I think the paranormal sometimes just by the name of it, it's or you know, or when you hear ESP, extrasensory perception, you know, things that are outside of the normal perceptions that we have. Mm -hmm. So maybe some of the so, so same, maybe some of the rules or the functions that apply to normal behaviors don't apply in those settings, and that's what we should be looking at. We should have an open mind to them as critical thinkers. Agreed. Boy, that was a big ass lecture, wasn't it? <laughs> it wasn't a lecture. <laughs> but. Um, I hope that answers your question. I think that's how a, a good psychologist looks at that. Uh, I think a paranormal event would be just like somebody, you know, saying something to me that I thought could be possibly delusional. And there are many people who come in and you think they have delusions and upon further examination.